uh, for us to have a seminar on how to prepare a Sunday school lesson. This uh, could be applied to really any time you have to do any public speaking in the church, whether it be preaching a sermon, Bible study, Sunday school. Um, you know, it, it, some of these principles are going to be across the board, okay? Uh, now, first of all, I want to make sure that everyone has one of these packages. I hope you have something to write with. Hopefully, you'll have some 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 questions um, and, and, and thoughts and ideas that you may want to share, okay? Now, the way how this is going to go tonight is the fact that... Um, it's going to be broken up sort of into two to three sections. Initially, I'm going to deal with the, the middle school, high school, and adult classes. And then I'm going to address the elementary classes. Um, so I want all of you to hear all of the information because my hope is that all of us will become flexible. So yes, you may be assigned to teach the adult class, but there may be a Sunday something goes wrong and we need to pull you down to work with the five to seven year olds. Yes, you may be assigned to teach the five to seven year old, but there may be something that happens that we might need to pull you up to the high school class one Sunday. Um, so I want to have all of you to get all of the information, even though all of it may not be applicable to your particular set of students, okay? Um, I've given you some resource materials. Again, all of it may not be applicable to your students, but I want you to have the information just in case I call you and say, hey, you know what, Sister Denise? Me, Brother Frank, or Reverend Sam won't be here on Sunday, so I really need you to cover me in the adult class, okay? Uh, I want for you to know how to be able to prepare yourself to work with that class. Is that okay? Amen. All right, with that being said, um, like I've told you, there are a couple of handouts in here. Um, now, I want to give you some, um, a couple of thought processes that I have um, and just a philosophy around how, uh, when you're teaching, all right? Uh, one of the first things I want to say to you is that Sunday school is not preaching. Okay, and if you find yourself speaking for more than two to three minutes, just you by yourself, you have a problem. Okay, you have a problem. Sunday school is not preaching. You should be having a discussion at the bare minimum. This is a situation where you as a teacher, you're coming to be able to get a response from your students and then be able to respond to that so that way they can get proper guidance and proper instruction and clarification on what they are thinking, okay? So I really want you to refrain from being, to doing too much talking. Um, and with that being said, uh, one of my general principles is I do not want you to make statements. I want you to ask questions. I don't want you to make statements. I want you to ask questions. So if I need to tell Brother Cunningham, you know what? Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. That's a statement. In Sunday school, that's not what you want to do. You want to ask a question to be able to communicate that same message. You know what, Brother Cunningham? Do you know who Jesus is? And did you know that he died on the cross? And did you know that he died for your sins? Is there anyone else who you think could have done that? Okay? So you want to ask them questions and hear the responses as opposed to standing and making statements to them because, again, you're not preaching. Okay? Um, so I want you to understand, one, you're not preaching, but it should be a discussion. Secondly... Try to avoid making statements and try to more ask questions. Third thing is, do not always lecture. Do not always lecture. There are other ways of teaching that does not involve you standing in front of a class and saying what you need to say to them. 
Now, as I am telling you, do not always lecture. If you look in your folder, there is a high yellow resource. Okay? What, what Christy has done is she's compiled a list of common teaching methods. Okay? Common teaching methods. And this gives you some ideas. What this does is gives you some ideas on different way how you can present your information. Okay? Uh, and we're going to refer back to this uh, as we're going through the process. But I wanted you to know what this is. It's common teaching method. So when you're preparing your lesson during the course of the week, just sit and say, all right, you know what? Let me not, last week I did lecture. So this week, let me just challenge myself to do something else. So you look at the sheet, you pick one, see what it is, get an idea. If you're not certain, give me a call, give Christy a call, give Kenny a call. All of us are here to work with you and to give you ideas on how to um, come across in your lessons, okay? So do not always lecture. Try to do different things. Um, and one of the most important things that I always try to do when I am preaching or even teaching, but especially when you're teaching, is ask yourself the question, based upon this subject that we're discussing or I'm teaching the class today, why does this matter? Why are we here talking about this? Always try to answer that question for your students because they will not always be able to pull that out. So you have got to explicitly be able to tell them the reason why this is so important, the reason why this is so important for you to understand, the reason why it's so critical for you to know this is because. Okay? So always try to answer the question, why does this matter? Okay? Always try to answer the question, why does this matter? Alright? Now, I'm about to go into, so all of those things that I just shared with you were general principles or thought processes that I try to follow when I'm preparing a lesson, okay? First one is, uh, you are not preaching, um, it's a discussion. Two is, do not make statements, but try to ask as many questions as possible. Three, do not always lecture but try to use different teaching styles. And four, always answer the question, why does this matter? Okay, always try to answer that question for your students. Why are we here talking about this? Now, tonight, um, our discussion is gonna be very limited, um, again, because we have very limited amount of time. And because I understand that some of you have not always been teaching Sunday school, some have been doing it for more than others. Um, I want to kind of walk you through some of how I prepare myself um, and I've talked to some people to see how they prepare themselves um, in order to bring out a good and effective Sunday school lesson. Alright, just like I told you before, I'm going to deal with the adults, high school and middle school classes first, then I'm going to deal with the elementary students after. The reason why I've broken it down into dealing with it in those two sections is because when you're working with adults, um, middle school and high school students, they are at a point in their physical and mental development to where you really need to engage their mind. You really need to engage their mind. However, when you're working with elementary students, you really need to engage their senses. You really need to engage their senses, meaning their ability to see, their ability to hear, their ability to touch, and their ability to move. Okay? So that's why I've kind of broken it up because when, if all else fails, and you're teaching the adult class, you could always just stand up and talk and probably get away with it. Okay, you could give a lecture. You never prepared to somebody come and say, hey, you know what? I know it wasn't your Sunday, but brother Frank, could you go ahead and take care of it for me today? Worst come to worst, you're going to be able to stand up there and be able to at least lecture. But that will not work with a five to seven year old. Okay? You cannot lecture them. They're kids. Their mind is not developed enough to be able to follow that thought process. So you must engage their senses, their ability to see, their ability to touch, their ability to hear, 
and their ability to move, okay? Um, and as I'm going along, if you have any questions or you need clarification on anything that I'm saying, feel free to just raise your hand or let me know, okay? All right, now, with the adults, again, this here, and this is going to apply to both, to both. So I, there's a page in here that talks about how to prepare a lesson. What I'm going to do um, is just kind of review it. Now, again, um, I've, I've been teaching for a while. I'm about 29 now. But I've actually been teaching Sunday school and Bible study since I've been 18. So altogether, I've been doing it about 11 years. So there are certain things that you'll see that I do, and it may come across a little bit better than you. Um, yes, because I've been doing it 11 years. But if this is like your first year, or maybe your second or third year, don't be surprised at the fact that Brother Frank may be doing it better than you because he's been preaching you know, I don't know how many years now, but he's obviously a more experienced teacher, okay? So, don't, don't beat yourself up, especially if I just asked you recently to volunteer to teach, okay? Um, and, you re and, and, and what I don't want to have happen is you get discouraged and say, hey, you know what? I'm not really good at this, and that's because you're comparing yourself to somebody else that's been doing it for 20 years, okay? The, don't be surprised at the fact that pastor preaches better than you. You shouldn't be surprised at that he's been preaching for 30 years, okay? Uh, so don't beat yourself up about that because he has more experience. So now, so you have to give yourself time to learn some of these principles and allow your, your you're going to be trial and error. There are going to be mistakes and stuff like that, but you will get better. And what I'm trying to teach you is a system, a repeatable system that you can use each and every time you have to do something like this, whether it be preach teach, or do any form of public speaking, okay? Now, um, all of these that I'm going to share with you here on this page is going to apply to whatever age group that you're telling, you know, whatever age group that you're working with, okay? So the document that says how to prepare a lesson, that's what we're going to be working with now, how to prepare a lesson. Everybody got that? Amen. How to prepare a lesson. All right, now, the first thing I said um, is this. There are three main things that you're going to want to focus on when you're thinking about a lesson. Okay, is you got to ask yourself generally, what am I trying to say? How am I going to say it? And what do I need to say it? What am I trying to say? How am I going to say it? And what do I need to say it? Okay, so you see those three questions there. What do I want to say? How do I present the information? And what materials will I need? How many of you were um, here for um, Kenny's sermon on Sunday? Great. Because in his sermon, you'll see uh, that he was able to answer all three of those questions. He was talking to us about a particular subject which is all of us have gifts inside of us and we need to stir up the gifts, right? How did he want to say it? He was preaching, right? But what materials did he need? You saw that he brought in a piece of log, some lighter fluid, some lighter, and all the different things to be able to illustrate a point. Okay? Do you see that? What do you want to say? How do you want to say it? And thirdly, what materials will I need in order to say it? Now, Kenny's sermon was really good because in that kind of a situation, it would, it would be effective for both adults and young children. And the reason for that is because from the adult perspective, he was able to engage their mind. They can listen through a discussion. But from the younger children's perspective, he was also be able to ex engage their sight because he was able to show them the things that he was talking about. Okay, do you see that? Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you definitely want to try to think about these things as you're sitting um, and preparing your lesson. Okay, now, um, one of the things is this, uh, and this is just kind of, the, there are certain things in here that I'm not going to touch on because we don't have enough time for it. And one of the things, the first thing that you see that I have in, now we're going to talk about what do you want to say. I'm going to be sending you out an email uh, either tonight or tomorrow. 
and it's going to be an article, excuse me, an article on how to study, okay? I don't know how each of you are studying right now, and there are different ways of doing that, and we could have even done a seminar on that, but that's not what we're going to talk about tonight. All I'm telling you that the first thing you have to do is study when you're trying to prepare a lesson. As of right now, for those of you who have not had the commentary, I have been emailing you the information. Uh, it's my intent to get that out on Tuesdays. However, uh, last week I got it out on Thursday, and I apologize about that. Okay, but uh, I, I, because I want to make sure that you have enough time during the week to, to get the information and start studying. One of our recent Sunday school lessons was about meditation. And just like I was sharing with the class when I did that lesson was the fact that when, if I'm given enough time, like I know I'm going to teach on Sunday, if I'm given enough time, I read my scripture as far ahead in advance, assuming I even have a scripture. Um, and I take that scripture and I just kind of let it go through my mind. I meditate on that, meditate on that. So that I can start to see what is God really trying to say to me to this through this scripture. Okay? So one of the things, depending on how much time you have, there may be times you get four, five, six, ten, twenty days, but there may be some times when a pastor comes to you and say, Hey, on Friday night, Brother Frank, I need you to preach on Sunday. And it's a limited a little less time, um, but at the end of the day, you know, the more time you have, the better you should be. So I'm gonna try to get that out to you on Tuesdays, okay? With that being said, uh, the expectation, if nothing else, is that you read the scriptures as soon as possible. Okay? Because from reading the scriptures, you'll at least now be able to start be thinking about what is this scripture mean and what is it trying to say. You see what I'm saying? Now, different people go in depth at different levels. At, if you're teaching the adult class, obviously you have much more intellectually advanced people people who are much more intelligent, people who are much more read. So, you want to really make sure you take some time to really understand the text and understand the scripture that it is you have to teach your lesson on. Okay? You may need to make sure you have a, a good Bible commentary, you have a concordance, you have a good Bible dictionary. Uh, so that way you can really do some research around what the scripture means. And I also want to say this to you. If you are reading through the scripture and you are not quite certain what the scripture means or what it is trying to say, you can always email me or give me a call. You can always talk to Kenny. You can always talk to my wife, Christy. And you can always talk to your pastor. Okay? So that way, if, if, if for whatever reason you're just not certain, you're not there, come to one of us we'll be able to try and see if we can help you to get a better understanding of that scripture. Okay? Now, a couple of things. A uh, um, couple of things I'm going to try to tell you. These are I did not write these down, but I'm, I'm probably going to send out a lot of this information in an email to you as well. A uh, couple of things about when you're teaching. Okay? Uh, and this is kind of like a side note. Is, one, try to avoid teaching doctrine. And what I mean by that is um, try to stay away from doctrinal issues like uh, speaking in tongues, baptism. Uh, try to avoid them. You're not going to always be able to avoid them, but try to stay away from those. The reason for that is this. You want to leave the doctrinal issues up to the pastor of the church. The pastor of the church is the one who you want to best explain it. And the reason for that is simply this. I might feel one way about tithing. And Pastor Ferguson might feel another way about it. However, because this is Pastor Ferguson's church, it is his feeling that needs to go out to the congregation. Mine needs to be personal. Because it's his church, it is his opinion at this point, or his position at this point, that really matters. Okay? So try to avoid them. Again, you're not always going to be able to do it because your student may ask a question. But if you notice that in your preparation, you get the scripture on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you see that there are some doctrinal issues that come up in your study, 
it is best for you to go directly to pastor. Okay? If someone comes, if you notice that the passage has something to deal with baptism, with tithing, with, um, with speaking in tongues, just whatever are the major uh, doctrinal issues. If you are not certain what Pastor Ferguson's position is on those teachings, you need to get with him directly before you go and teach the class. And the reason for that, again, is this. You don't want to put forth your own opinion because they may be different from his, and then he now has a problem having to try to clean up what you have already put out to the congregation. So you want to be very, very careful about that. Okay? Um, and, um, and again, like I said, if you ever need any information on clarification on the scripture, you can always email me or call me um, for me to kind of talk you through uh, what the scripture means or what it's trying to say. Okay? But at the end of the day, number one, the first thing you've got to do is study your scripture. However you do your studying, you have got to do that so you're fully aware of what the context of the scripture is, what the time is going on. You know, you've got to work with the scripture. And generally, when you get these passages, they're usually going to be very small passages in the Sunday school um, books. It's a good idea for you to read the entire chapter and sometimes even the entire book, just so you can get a proper context of what that particular passage is talking about, okay? So it's really very good that you study it. You have to study your scripture before you start um, really doing anything. Now, when you start studying your scriptures, okay, you want to then ask yourself this question. From this scripture, what is it that jumps out at me? What issues do I see that are outstanding in this scripture? What are the themes that are outstanding in this scripture? Because that's going to help you to determine what am I going to be talking about. Okay? There are a lot of different passages and there are a lot of different things. Like usually, um, when we're working, let's say, with the commentary, we usually have a unit theme. Uh, do you guys understand how the organization of the commentary works? Okay? There's a unit theme. Usually each quarter we have a particular unit. Okay? Uh, and I send that out to you in the email. And then for this particular day that you're teaching, there is a subject for that lesson. So now, a passage like Psalm 23, the Lord is my light, I'm not Lord my light, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, right? You can take that passage and run in a lot of different directions with it. You could use that one to talk about love. You can use that one to talk about protection. You can use it to talk about a lot of different things. But what you want to do is, all right, I know that this particular quarter, we're focusing on spiritual growth. So when you're reading your scripture, you're studying, you should be going into that scripture saying, what is this scripture saying about spiritual growth? Okay? So that way you're trying to figure out what themes are there that's relating to the subject that we're dealing with for the unit and for that particular day, okay? Um, because again, w w the scripture is wide enough to where you can take any particular verse and go in a lot of different directions with it. But try to stay within the confines of what the scripture, um, the unit and the subject of that lesson is. All right, so first you want to read the scripture and study. Second, you want to determine what issues from the text you'd like to address in your lesson. And then the third thing you want to do is create an outline. Okay? You want to create an outline. In here, when we had first had our first meeting, I emailed and gave everyone one of these forms. Uh, how to create an outline template. Okay? Has everyone seen this from me before? The how to create an outline? The first time I gave you guys a package of information, this was in it. I did not talk to you about it because I was planning on discussing it with you tonight. Okay? Um, you, you, I know you see it. Oh, it should be in your package. Mm -hmm. You don't have the how to create an outline? Mm -hmm. um, so it says lesson plan template. Okay? Now, if you have the commentary, the commentary usually gives you an outline. Okay? But the way how I want us to use the commentary is, I do, not, I do not want you to take the commentary and go read it back to your class. Um, that, that's not the intent of the commentary. 
The reason for that is the people already have the commentary. So if you're going to come and read to them what they should have already read, that's a waste of time. Okay? We are now here as teachers to bring out issues and topics within that lesson that is not directly written in the commentary. So coming in, I'm not saying you can't quote certain things that you find like beneficial from the commentary, but don't come and read back the commentary. You've got to be able to dive into that scripture yourself and pull out fresh revelation from God. All right, and that's going to come from your, your studying and your meditating, okay? Now, after you've uh, figured out what the scripture says, now you need to put together an outline. And the reason for the outline is mainly this. You're going to have a lot of thoughts in your mind. You're going to have a lot of thoughts in your mind. But what you need to do is organize your thoughts into some kind of a logical flowing order, Okay? Uh, give me one quick second. You may know that in this scripture, we're going to talk about love, peace, and joy. You can decide if you want to talk about joy, love, peace, or peace, love, joy, but that's what the outline would help you to do. When I'm teaching, which one of these am I going to talk about first? Which one am I going to be talking about second? And which one I'm going to be talking about third? Okay, go ahead, Pastor. Each and each, um... So the school has an outline given in the, in the book that they're using. Mm -hmm. How is that different from what you're suggesting here? Not necessarily. Um, it, you can work, like I said, the commentary has one, and you can work with the one that's there. Um, me personally, when I take it, I generally, I look at the scripture. I don't really look at the commentary. I take the Bible itself read it, and then see what God is trying to say to me through there. But I, After I've done that, mm -hmm. then I go back and look at what the commentary is saying. So, this, so that's what I'm saying. Depending on the thoughts that come to me, these may or may not be what's in the commentary. But what I'm saying here, that, that's a little bit confusing because the students that have the outline looking at is facing a different something different from a different angle. Not so I would suggest that um, even as much as you have this, and I, I don't have any problem with this, but if you're going to make up a separate outline from what is in the book, certainly, if they giving in the book would be useless, you should give them the outline that you are using instead of the book. That, that could be an option where you can do a handout that the class would follow along with. And we will discuss that. But it does not render it useless because again, you're going to be going into you're going to be going into the scripture from your study and your preparation. Remember, like I said, if your intent if you know that your unit theme is spiritual growth, you should be going into the scripture thinking about what does this text try to say to us about spiritual growth. That, that's how you're going into the text. Mm -hmm. What is this? So now when you come up with your thoughts and your ideas on what it's saying to you about spiritual growth and the issues that you want to address, I have found that it doesn't necessarily conflict with what's in the outline. But Yes, but that is a discussion. You're discussing what is already in the in the in the um, the Sunday school book, may, may I suggest something? if you are discussing it, then you can say anything you want is how you feel about it. But if you're going to follow two outlines at the same time, how does that work? Because you have one, and they're looking at one, and if somebody wanted, where is he? What, where is he now? I, I have this before, but he's giving me something else. So you have to be careful that you avoid doing that. Okay, I'll address that in just a second. Go ahead, Brother Frank. I think, I think the, the, the reason why the book is recommended is that everybody is focusing on the same topic at the same time. So if you pick up the topic from the outline, that's where everybody is focusing on. We're looking at the scripture that discuss that particular outline. Then everybody is in unison doing that. But if you draw another outline from that of the book, you can still ask you, you have your questions ready for those outlines, then it will blend. 
Because if you start looking at the different outlines, where, where do we have the book? That's what like that's 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 okay, hold, 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 uh, no, no, I, it's not what I'm trying to say, but okay. Oh, hold, hold on one quick second. Hold on one, one quick second. We have, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of questions here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to both of those in a second. Sapali, you want to say something? I'm going to save me so because I realized I'm not so good at this. 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 I'm not so good at Married what the opinion of word word. is in the actual commentary, what he wants you to do is to study the Bible, the, the Bible itself, and not even that he wants to give you a broader concept of, of what the scripture is saying. So he's encouraging us to, to get out there and to study to show ourselves that we want to God himself so that, that when, when you do actually speak, you, you're, you're speaking from the word, but you know, it's not really what the commentary is saying. No, but and you're suggesting there that your commentary is not saying the word of God. Are people limited to the commentary? No. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We have the commentary there to help people who are weak. Not but everybody true. has a spiritual that. experience yeah. to read the scripture and engage their thoughts and whatever. Everybody is different. Okay. We have the comments there. The lesson plan is made for you. Learn from it. If it wasn't approved by the church of God, you wouldn't use it. Hold on. I, I don't know. Hold on. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want us to go down the street of thinking that there's something wrong with what's in the commentary. That, that no, by no, no means no, what I'm no, saying. No, 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 no. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. Okay? What I'm trying to say is this. The commentary... What the com the way how the commentary works, or, or or any Sunday school book, is that they're going to look at the text, and someone wrote that interpretation of what the scripture means. Okay. However, that is not the only interpretation. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying it is right. It's not that. But I'm just saying it is an interpretation. But you being the teacher. You're going to look along the same subject and say, what is it that this is? So, I'm not saying that you necessarily, but you should be coming to some sort of a similar idea, but just using your own unique words and your own example. Go home and see to us what Psalms 23 says about love. And then we say, okay, you know, Brother Frank, you go home and see what Psalms 23 says to us about love. We give both of you 20 minutes, and both of you would come away with individual perspectives about what Psalms 23 says about love. And at the end of the day, they're both under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and they're both talking about love from Psalms 23. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying when you have a thought... This is why you're creating your outline to follow your own thought process. Not necessarily that they give you Psalm 23 to talk about love, and then you come in and start talking about from Psalm 23 about uh, provision. That's, that's not what I'm telling you to do. We're all focusing on the same subject, but what is your unique perspective around that same subject matter from that same scripture? I like to make a... As, um, uh, a clarification. You said that uh, you have many um, interpretation. And that's not how the scripture works. You have one interpretation, but many application. So how it is applied to you is different. Many application, but one interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Let's not get bogged down with specific. Yes, the book is there. It's a guideline. The book is a guideline. So come yes, here all you know, right. you, yes. Let's let's think outside the box and not get caught up on specific. But both um, both of what you all are saying is right. Um, so I think we need to do a hybrid, mix the two together. We can. It's it's good to create your own outline because one, it helps you learn the topic, and it helps you put things in your own words. But it's true to limit confusion because other people are using the commentary. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen is you can create your own outline, but from time to time refer back to the commentary and say, "Listen, this is the topic," and then and then add to or just say or just use it. But try to mix the two together so that way you can keep people on track. Those who are using the commentary and those who aren't using it but are following you. Like like in, in the case of our class because. The commentary has like six pages. It's just too much. 
and our children do not have the commentary. So in a case like that, we actually have to tailor this to meet the needs of that particular class because they're only middle schoolers. But with the adult class, they already have it, they already are reading it, so then that's the difference. But with us, we really have to make this smaller mm -hmm. and at their level because this is really a lot for that's, them to understand. That's why so I we have still to use it. Yeah. 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 Because if everybody yeah. 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 the teachers yeah. of the yeah. other classes, yeah. Are right. which we become, I guess, what she's saying, what you're saying, become relevant. Yeah, yeah. it comes, well, it comes <laughs> relevant to our class, for example. but. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so, so this is what I'm saying. It, it's not. I, I, I hope it didn't come across as me telling you to throw away the commentary. That's not what I'm saying. But you've got to be able to get into the scripture, see what God is saying to you around the subject that is given. If the commentary says we're talking about love, you need to go into the, the scripture and say, what is this saying to me about love? And then from there. You now need to organize your thoughts on how you're going to discuss that, and that's what you would be having in that line. All right, now that I know I'm talking about love, am I talking about pure love? Am I talking about perfect love? I'm talking about imperfect love. That's where you're having an outline to kind of guide you. Where am I going to go next? What am I thinking about next? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, now, with this outline, um, one of the things on here that I want you to do is, remember this needs to be a discussion. So on your outline, you should be having a list of questions. A list of questions for discussion. Okay, a list of questions for discussion. And right beneath where you have the questions that you're asking, you then need to think about, what do I think some of the answers or the responses to this scripture will be? Okay? And once you get what you, you, what you think of, now you're not going to think of what every possible question is, but you should come up with a few, all right? And then from there, you're going to answer those questions on your outline, okay? And when you're answering these questions, one of the things that's very important when you're teaching the Bible is that you try to stay as much away from giving your opinion and really just trying to give out instruction based upon what the Bible says, okay? So when you're asking your questions, you now think about the answers, and when you have your answers, then I want for you to put the scriptural reference that you're using in order to give that answer, okay? So generally, uh, you're not going to come up and someone ask you, well, did Jesus Christ resurrect on the third day? Well, you know, I really think that he resurrected on the second day. No, you're going to, well, based upon John chapter this, that, verse that, the Bible says that he resurrected on the third day. So that way you're pointing your students right back to what the Bible says, okay? But the thing about it is you have got to have a list of questions, a list of anticipated questions, I mean responses, and then you have an answer along with your scriptural reference, okay? And that's basically what an outline is going to do. It's just basically going to help you to guide your thoughts and the flow of your discussion. Okay? Um, does anybody have any questions before we move on to the next section? Okay. So this is, so now remember when you're preparing the lesson, three questions you're asking. What am I going to say? And having the outline is going to help you to figure out what you're going to say. Now, how am I going to say it? This is where I want you to, again, refer back to this yellow reference form. That's green. That's green. That's what I'm thinking. That's green. Okay. It's green. Look at this green reference form. It's yellow. With this green. It's yellow. It's okay. We don't have to discuss it. I think I work with green. Um, with, so you're looking at this green reference form, this now, you already, you've, read your scripture, you've meditated on it, you've prayed about it, and you've written down what you're going to say, okay? Now, the next part of the process is saying, all right, how do I want to communicate this message? So now, am I going to be doing a case study around this particular subject? Am I going to be doing a panel discussion around this subject? Am I going to bring in a videotape that highlights this subject and then we discuss it? Are we going to break up into small group, discuss it and then come back together? You have a bunch of different ways 
how you can then present the information to your class. And again, I challenge you not to always lecture because that is the most common way, uh, but we've also found that it is not the most effective way of teaching. Okay, it's not the most effective way of teaching. So if you can, just challenge yourself to try one of the different methods of teaching other than lecturing. Okay? And again, there's nothing wrong with lecturing. Um, you know, depending on your time for preparation as well, that would also make a difference what all you can do because some of them require more preparation than others. Um, and lecture is usually pretty uh, simple because you're only working with yourself. Okay? Uh, so that's what this reference form is. This is going to help you to determine how you're going to say what it is that, or how you're going to present your information. And then lastly, you just kind of need to sit down and say, all right, well, now that I've decided what I'm going to say and how I want to present it, now you need to think about what materials am I going to need. Am I going to do a panel discussion? So maybe I need to get six cheers for the six people who are on the panel. Am I going to be doing some sort of a prop exercise where I need to get the log like Kenny did in the fire uh, and the, and the uh, liquid the, the fuel, just like what he had? You need to get whatever materials you're going to need in order to effectively communicate your message. Okay? Everybody got that? Yes. Good. Are there any questions around how to prepare a lesson if you're working with a high school, middle school, um, or the adult class? Okay, great. Come back to, to something you said. Um, sure. That has the same thing. It's that we said, um, you said, avoid doctrine. Avoid teaching doctrine. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm asking this because you don't want to, while you want to avoid things that are, for example, controversial and, and stuff. You, when you teach <laughs> teenagers, for example, you don't want to look like you don't have that information. You don't want to look like you don't know what you're talking about because those teenagers are kind of unforgiving sometimes when it comes to that. And they view you as not being, you know. You're not capable. You, you know, you're not capable. And, and I do understand some of the controversial stuff. I do, you know, if you're not sure. But for example, and I'm saying this because, maybe because my Sunday school teacher is sitting right here, but many of the things, even, as much as I grew up in the church, many of the things that I learned in terms of speaking in tongues and stuff like that, I learned from Pastor Sam's in my Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. Not from what's being preached, you know, from the pulpit, because, you know, sometimes it's not, it's not enough. You, you don't get to ask your questions. You don't get to, to, to get that feedback. You don't get to, it broken down to you. So, well, what do you do? I mean, I, I, I said avoid. Um, I didn't say do not. Okay. Um, and and again, there's a distinguished the, the, the distinction there in saying that again, your students will ask you questions, and in an effort to one be able to answer their question, um, you want to try to handle it delicately. But a lot of times, personally, when I am dealing with doctrinal questions. I usually preface it by saying, I'm going to share some information with you, but what I'd like for you to do is also speak with your pastor or the pastor as to exactly how he wants you to understand that. So I think if you give a disclosure that you should be fine, but again, depending on, there are certain scriptures that you know it's going to come up. And if you can or if you're unsure about I, and I would not, if I were you, like you said, you learned from Brother Sam's. I would not lean on what you learned from him because he is not the pastor of the church. Instead, what you'd want to do, just to be certain, is speak to Pastor Ferguson and be very clear um, with him about what his position is. Um, because, again, this is his church and we are following, for the most part, his teaching. Now, hold on. That, sound, that sounds funny, uh, but at the end of the day, it's really not. They've both been a member of the Church of God for a long time, so for the most part, they're not getting different teachings. So it, it, even though it sounds funny, we know that that is not really a big deal. They're probably not that far apart on anything. But just what I'm saying is 
you need to honor and respect your pastor in the sense that you need to teach what he wants right. us to teach. Right, and I have no problem with that. That's not what I was saying, but I'm just saying when you face, like, even in my own home, I'm going to give an example. Even in my own home, if, if I allow Jody to wear pants to church every Sunday, she would, because she likes them. And I would say to her, Jody, while, while I personally doesn't think it has anything to do with Christianity, the fact is it is not liked in our church, so we're not doing it. That's how I approach exactly. it. Exactly. But so I'm actually, so I, I enforce the rules, whether spoken or unspoken rules of the church mm -hmm. and, and the doctrine and what pastor teaches. I'm just saying, but when you're teaching a class, especially with teenagers who are going to engage you in, you're not, I, I'm not strained, I'm not going to sometimes express my personal opinion, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying to avoid it would not work. Well, and again, like I said, you won't always be able to. And there, there are some things that are debatable and there's some things that are not, you know. Uh, again, for the most part, you don't really need to consult with Pastor Ferguson on if Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead or not. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? I do understand but, the controversial stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, but again, like I said, you know, if you are uncertain about a certain topic, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you check with him before giving any responses. One of the things that I usually do uh, if I'm teaching, let's say, the adult class, because most of the time he sits there, I usually defer to him and say, hey, Pastor, could you go ahead and answer that? But again, most of you won't have that because he's not sitting in your class. Okay? So, but at the end of the day, though, what my concern is this. I am not coming in and saying, well, you know what? I believe that people are born gay. And then Pastor Ferguson is saying, well, no, people are not born gay. But because I'm in front of the church standing up teaching and I make such a, a bold statement, Again, which is not something you're going to find written in the Bible. You need to make sure you first get with him to deal with that issue. So even if I believe that people are born gay, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that. If someone asks me the question, I'm going to say, well, Pastor Ferguson believes that people are not born gay. Because again, the Bible doesn't explicitly say people are born gay versus people are not born gay. It's a debatable issue. So you're asking us not to take on controversial issues. Not well, I'm not saying don't that. take them on. I'm, I'm saying, saying if you have an opportunity, yeah. consult with your past. But it's more controversial than you than you're talking about. You're talking about then doctrine. Right. Right? What, but at the end of the day, that still falls under in my mind doctrine. Not necessarily. Because, uh, yeah. uh, I want to, uh, let me say here, oh you want to say something. No, no, whatever no. you do, whatever you do, and it has to do with the scripture, is doctrine. Mm -hmm. Some of them are not spelled out because the word doctrine means teaching of God. Mm -hmm. And um, I, if I'm teaching a class and I am, I don't know, have a good answer for it, I tell the class, I cannot, uh, that has happened before. Yes. I'll do some research and get back okay. to you. Yeah. And that's because of what you're teaching. But if, if it's doctrine, doctrine, as you say, it, or philosophy, or something else, just say, I do not have the answer right now, but I promise you, my next class, I'll give you the answer. So in that time, you have enough time to talk with the pastor, if you wish. And then take back the answer. And make sure you take back the answer. Yeah, sure. Right. To me, it doesn't sound that's like what you're saying. I, we understand the doctrine of art and, you know, talking to the pastor, but in the meantime, it doesn't mean that you're going to stay ignorant. That's true. You, you should because also... Just remember now, and dealing with a teenager, a high school teenager, a 12-year-old, a 3-year-old, or whatever it is, I think you have to be very well prepared to deal with these children. Because you already have them at home. And they're, whether they're asking you the questions, yes or no, they're getting it from somebody else. That's right. So in the meantime, I don't think we should stay very ignorant at all. No, no we, we, we definitely, we're definitely going to study. But all, 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 my main concern is this. How, however you want to apply it to yourself. This is, this is my main message to you. I don't want you to go in front of your classes and tell them your own opinion. I want for you to communicate Pastor Ferguson's opinion. That's my message to you. However that applies to your situation, take it however you want to. You cannot work with that. But again, the, the consequences are going to be, obviously, if pastor comes in and he hears you saying things on a regular basis that's contrary to what he teaches, then obviously you can understand why he wouldn't want you teaching in his church. 
So is really that the doctrinal statement of the church? Well, well, hold on. Again, yeah. yeah. Well, hold on. Hold on. Again. Hold on. Again. There are some things there, there really is no debate about. There is no debate about if Jesus resurrected on the third day. You see what I'm saying? There are certain big things. But we're talking about the Bible. We have over a hundred different Christian denominations. And each one of them is formed based upon a different understanding of probably a very similar scripture that you read. So, all I'm saying is that we are working uh, with a scripture and people can take it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying don't take it your way, take it pastor's way. But isn't, isn't that in direct contradiction to what you said about when we we're planning our lessons and outlined that when we read the scripture we expand our natural intellectual horizons? see what interpretation we can come and then didn't he say we could reach no, out actually he no. said that avoid your own opinion as no. much as possible well when but, but when you and way. i made the comment that if you're not spiritually prepared how can you prepare from a scripture that's how i'm, I'm getting i'm getting a contradiction here because if you're asking me to read it and bring my own interpretation my own outline and whatever whatever am i wrong that i was the only one who heard that well, when I'm saying to bring your own unique, but to bring your own unique perspective on Jesus resurrecting on the third day, um, you know, you may like to say, "Hey, you know what? I I see balls bouncing with him coming out the grave, versus uh, I see a man raising up like this." Your perspective may be bouncing, and I see a man, but at the end of the day, we know that he got up on the third day. So having a unique perspective doesn't necessarily mean that it is unbiblical or it is going to be in direct con conflict with what our pastor teaches. Um, and again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Take it however you want to. I'm just giving you general advice on saying I would prefer for you to put forth the teaching that Pastor Ferguson um, um, teaches. Now, how do you find out what that is? Obviously, you need to be here on Sundays when he's preaching and come to Bible study when he's teaching on Wednesday nights. That'll be a good way for you to find out what his positions are on different issues, short of calling him up um, every week when you need to teach. Okay? So, again, this may not be a big deal because a lot of us have been under his leadership for 10, 15, 20 years, so we're pretty good on what he teaches, but everybody, that's not my wife's situation. That's not Brian's situation. There are different people who may be coming from a different denomination. Um, you know, you may be coming from Church of God of Prophecy. You may be coming from Church of God of Seventh Day. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying you may be coming from somewhere where you haven't been under him for the last 20 years. I mean, for your whole, your whole life like Conway. So just make sure that you're in line with what he wants his congregation to know. Well, then could we have a Sunday school teacher seminar with the pastor so we know what the pastor is teaching? I would recommend you come to Bible study on Wednesday nights. That is a great time to well, really understand. I want a pastor Bible seminar. Study. Yeah, well, I would recommend that you come to the, point of the Bible study. study. Well, come to Bible study. But he doesn't necessarily teach doctrine in the Bible study. He teaches Bible study. Look, um, Brother Jim does teach it with the class, the, the class, the um, new beginning class. He teaches the doctrine of the church. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Sister Lee. All of a sudden, I'm looking at that and I know that it didn't work. I understand. I am not there. I understand. I but like, like I said. Excuse, but it would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm saying, we don't, we don't want to belabor this point. All I'm saying is, I hope you take, take that message and run with it however you want to. All I'm saying is that I know I have some opinions that are different from Pastor Ferguson's, uh, but... I'm not going to stand and teach what my opinion is. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. But wouldn't you be, what would you be doing to your opinion if you should keep a problem? Uh, if I have so much of a problem with not being able to share my own opinion, I would have to go start my own church. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what it means to be under someone's leadership. Right, the real thing is that I understand what you're saying. And what you're saying is it's good. Independent pastor and founder assembly. You're not getting enough to get to You know, we got it. Because the truth is, the truth is, there are really some issues that are like tricky. We know them. It's not really worth so much debate. Whenever that do come up and we're uncertain, 
let's let's yeah, look at the pastor. If you're not sure about it, you're not confident about what what um, a question. You know, talk to pastor. I think that's the only respectful thing because mm -hmm. I, that's if you don't, you know. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to I'm going to deal with the elementary classes, okay? We're supposed to be wrapping up um, now, but let me just get this one last thing out, and then we'll wrap up, okay? For the elementary, for the, the people who teach ages 10 and down, um, in your books, your, your, your Sunday school curriculum does a very good lesson in giving you suggestions. Now, as far as what you're going to say, that's still going to be the same process as far as you taking the scripture, reading, studying, praying, meditating, okay? Now, how you present the information is what is going to be extremely different from the older students. And the main thing, the main message I want you to get from when you're preparing your lessons is, you must engage your students' senses. Um, there are four things that you really want to capture. You want to make sure that if you want to tell them that Jesus Christ loved them, you need they need to be able to see that, they need to be able to hear that, they need to be able to touch that, and they need to be able to move towards that, okay? With students, Obviously, we cannot expect five-year-olds to sit here as attentively as we're doing tonight. So you want to do activities where they're up and out and moving about, okay? That's the movement. You want to do things that they can see. That's going to involve coloring, maybe cutting out arts and crafts. You want to do things that they can touch, um, maybe displaying some kind of something that's going to bring out your, your subject. And you want to do things that they can hear. Maybe it's coming up with a lesson that really goes along. I mean, coming up with a song that really goes along with your lesson. Maybe they need to watch a video that really brings it out. But all I'm, the, my main message to you is try to engage your students' senses. Okay? Their ability to see, their ability to touch, their ability to move, and their ability to hear. You're not going to be able to lecture them, so please stay away from doing that. And when you are preparing your lesson, try to include at least two of those, okay? I'm trying to stay away from telling you to have them to taste, because I don't want you to end up spending too much money trying to buy them food. But if, you, if, you want, if you're willing to make the sacrifice, amen, so let it be. Besides, okay. The children and allergies. Oh, okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, though, for the for the younger classes, you have to engage their senses. Okay. And one last thing before we go. One last thing, and this you can really read on your own. But I want you to pull out this document that says assistant teacher. And this is very, very, very important. Okay. Um. I told, I told you guys that my expectation is that all of you are in your class every Sunday. I understand that that may not work out. However, the expectation is at least two of you need to be in a class um, every Sunday. Okay? So make sure that you guys pair up in teams if you need to. But the expectation is at least two of you is in a class every Sunday. Okay? Now, um, when there are two of you in a class, there's going to be a main teacher and then there's going to be an assistant teacher. The assistant teacher need to follow these rules. Uh, uh, I don't want to go through all of them one by one, but for the most part, one of the things that bothers me the most personally when working with other teachers is I am talking about love and then you come start discussing justice. Do not shift the focus of the class from the subject matter that the main teacher is discussing. Okay? If you are there, the only comments you should be making should be following along the same thought processing, piggybacking on what they're saying, but do not change completely the subject matter. Okay? That, that is very difficult because if the teacher has spent their week preparing to bring forth a lesson and they have their outline and exactly what they want to accomplish and they're going to talk about love, and 10 minutes into their lesson, you come in and start talking about provision. That's a big problem 
because it's their turn to teach. And you should all, you, you're going to get your turn, but this Sunday, it's their Sunday. Okay? So really try to avoid taking their attention away from the subject matter that the main teacher is teaching. And the second thing is, as the assistant teacher, please try to make sure that you're the one that is collecting the offerings and counting the students so whenever we have to present that information to the secretary, we have that information and the main teacher is not having to shift away from putting forth the word of, word of God uh, because they're trying to count students and collect money, okay? Now, with that, um, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to deal, deal with that. But that's on there. Um, another thing is, um, with that, um, you know, also try to help manage the class especially with the younger children. You know, they could be rowdy, so really try to help them stay focused, try to keep their attention, keep those students in the class away from texting and playing around on their phones if it's not necessary them using their Bible. Just try to help manage the classroom, okay? And one big, 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 big last thing is this. If you and another teacher have a difference of opinion about a certain subject matter, do not discuss it in front of the students. Do not discuss it in front of the students. Again, I might think that people are not born gay, and you think that people are born gay. Do not argue about that in front of your students. What you need to do is allow the teacher to finish saying their lesson, and then after class, you guys can have a private discussion and work it out in love. Okay? But do not have a difference of opinion in front of the student. The exception to that is obviously if they say something that is completely unbiblical, that they tell the students Jesus did not rise on the third day, he actually rose on the fifth. You have the spiritual authority to tell them, no, that is absolutely wrong, and I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I am serious. But that, that, generally, that's not happening. Again, a lot of us have been under the same teaching, under the same doctrine for a long time, so I really don't anticipate anything like that. But if someone comes and says something that is completely unbiblical, you have the spiritual authority to, to shut it down. But do not discredit the teacher in front of the student and do not have an argument about who's right or wrong in front of your students. Um, I, it, oh, you're talking about special groups. Yeah, but for adults, that's different.